Hi, Graham Healy reporting from Healy's No More BS dot com. Now, you know, I really look at the political scene and I look at the financial scene and uh, yeah, I make my comments on my website, but I think we're reaching critical mass in Australia. As a matter of fact, we're reaching critical mass worldwide as far as a GFC Mark II is concerned. So I'm doing this video because I feel that we must warn people and um, put the whole last 40 years in perspective. Now, <clears throat> I've written an article on uh, Healy's No More BS .com. Please go and have a look at it and read it. Also, I've put Bob Catter's um, uh, letter to the nation, or to his fellow Australians. I find that that is a very factual uh, letter and it puts a lot of things in perspective. Um, I actually come from Townsville originally, or Innisfail, and uh, so if I was up there, I'm in Brisbane at the moment, but if I was up there, I'd be definitely voting for Bob Catter. But uh, in uh, Brisbane, uh, I'll be putting my vote uh, towards um, the old uh, brick with eyes, uh, Glenn Lazarus. He's actually in touch with the people, and I believe that he'll be an excellent senator for the Queensland people and also for Australia, obviously, if he's a senator. The other uh, politicians, uh, well, I use that term politician with the gritted teeth, really, because I don't like the generation of politicians uh, since uh, perhaps uh, uh, John Howard and the, the uh, Bob Hawke uh, slash Keating era. Um, I won't go into that, it's just that, that would be another videotape all on its own uh, and we'd probably all get depressed. But anyway, at the end of the day, <clears throat> uh, what I'm suggesting to you for voting on July 2nd, it's going to be a very critical vote in Australia. I suggest that you vote independent. I'll be voting for Glenn Lazarus, as I said, uh, uh, Senator Glenn. Um, he's uh, an in independent. Uh, uh, he's got independent points of view. And what we really need in Australia, we need a complete change of government. We don't need the old Liberal and Labor and the the, uh, the uh, Greens in the background uh, running from one to the other. We've had enough of that. We've had a complete mess from either side of politics. They're not accountable. They're running their own little, it's almost like little bless me club by the politicians in the background. You know, you've got to realise these guys, <clears throat> like uh, Malcolm Turnbull, they're on 500 grand a year. Now, 500 grand a year, for goodness sake. Do you know how much money that is? The average Aussie, they say the average Aussie's on 80 grand a year. That's a complete lot of rubbish. The average wage is around about 50 grand a year. I mean, if you add in the top end guys, it lifts the norm up. But the average person out there is trying to survive on around about 700 a week, <clears throat> 35 to 50 grand a year, that's the more average. Uh, and also you're looking at pensioners and the unemployed. The unemployed, $250 a week. You know, that's under poverty level as far as the Australian average wage is concerned. If you were to believe Mr Turnbull uh, that quotes these out there statistics that really uh, I'm not going to go down that road because that's another video all in itself. But regarding uh, the average wage, 80 grand a year, uh, look around and see how many people you know, whether they're in small business or just working, are getting in excess of $1,500 a week or $40 to $50 an hour. You know anyone that's not a lawyer, doctor, or a dentist? That, well, I don't, and I've been in business for 30 years. And in, even in small business, if you, if you can take home uh, 1500 a week, your small business is doing fairly well when you take out all the expenses. So that's why I've, I actually founded the website Healy's No More BS .com because, you know, unless I got it all wrong, in Australia, we should have a normal BS filter up here. We've got access to the internet. We can actually have a look at the real facts and not listen to the politicians' hype. Now, I know the politicians have got on Facebook now, but they've actually revealed how stupid they really are. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You look at what they're, they're trying to push forward in the propaganda states. It's just pathetic. Anyway, I won't go down these road uh, too much. What I'll do is stick to the profile of the purposes videos. So have a look at the last 40 years and try to do it in summary. Uh, if you go onto my website, you can actually have a look at the details and you can <clears throat> actually do the proper research, I suggest that you actually listen to and read, 
especially listen to the videos and etc of people who actually know global finances both uh, internationally and domestically such as Professor Steve Keane who was in uh, Sydney in Australia now in London go on and have a look at um, Max Kaiser the Kaiser report uh, he's a little bit out there but I'll tell you what he tells it like it is and he's got a real him and his wife uh, have a real good grip on the global financial situation. Also, Jim Rickards has written the book, um, the, um, uh, you know, the currency wars, and a few other, the death of uh, currency or something. Well, currency wars is, is the main one. Have a have a listen to what he's got to say. I've got his blog on my website, uh, and then Mike Maloney, who's uh, got gold.com. He's done some very good educational videos that you can understand what the fiat system is, the whole globalisation or the whole proliferation of paper money um, uh, with no uh, backing whatsoever. It's just something that you think is worth, worth value of. Uh, and then Peter Schiff is the other guy. So those guys that I've got listed on Healy's no more B BS .com, uh they will give you navigation points to actually understand what's really happening in the economy. Now, we'll just go to the local scene in Australia. Let's say 1976. 1976, I was uh, in the airlines, so just started in the airlines. My wage about then was five bucks an hour. And uh, now, uh, 2016, back to the future, go straight to back to plus 40 years, and you find the average wage is about $18 per hour. Now, that's an increase of what, five, 10, 15, 20. That's increased about 300 to 400 percent. Well, it sounds all right, doesn't it? You know, five bucks an hour to about 18 bucks an hour. Well, they have, let's have a look at the house prices. I bought my house for 30 grand, 1976. The house now in Brisbane is 800,000. The average price of a fairly ordinary house, 800,000. That's 27 times more the value of 1976. That's almost gone up 3,000%. Just think about it for a little while. Uh, where's the inflation gone? Not in your wages. That's only gone up three or four times. 30 times the house valuations. And a house is a liability, it's not an asset. Have a think about that from a small business's point of view. It's costing you money. It's not making you much money. Well, certainly not anymore. Not at 800000 a house. You think you're going to sell that house for $1.6 in 10 years, as they used to try and tell you back in the 70s. Now, fair enough, in the 70s, if you had a house, you could resell it. Uh, you could probably make double the money in 10 years. That little asset inflation bubble, boom, it's gone. You won't be able to do that ever again. Now, let's have a look at the politics. Now, I know I'm flicking from one thing to the other a little bit, but the full detail is on my website because we really just don't have time to go through the detail and confuse everyone. Let's have a look at the politics. Okay, let's talk, talk about the deficit. Now, when we're talking government deficit, we're only talking of the fraction of what Australia owes. They took, at this point in time, 2016, uh, the government owes $800 billion. Sounds a lot? Well, it's not really. When you add in the private debt of Australia, total aggregate debt, $5.7 trillion. Now, the politicians will talk about gross domestic product, GDP. It's going all right, a couple of percentage points forward, a couple of percentage points back. Uh, you add in private debt and we're actually flatlined. We're below flatline. We're actually in recession. That's the reality. Now, how do I know that? I've been in business for 30 years. I've had 10 different businesses, small businesses, and I talk to a lot of small business owners and I know where they're at. Most small business owners, and I know some substantial ones, tell me, and I know that this is true from my own experience, in the last five years, progressively their turnovers have gone down 20% per annum. So they're at the lowest ebb they've ever been in five years, five to six years. Now, you might say, GFC won. This was the cause of it all. Well, yeah, look, it was the result of it all. It wasn't the cause of it all. Now, let me fill you in. 
Bo Hogue and uh, Paul Keating. Uh, Whitlam, Whitlam, Hawke, Keating. I voted for Bob Hawke, by the way. I thought he was a top bloke, and I didn't mind Paul Keating, actually. I, he, I used to get a ton of laughs out of Paul Keating. Uh, he used to really nail the smart Alex in politics, and I still like him to this day. However, let's have a look at that little uh, slot in time, round about, you know, the 80s, 80s, edging up to the 90s. Now, Whitlam establish a lot of good social agendas, you know, Medibank, uh, you know, the, the, the free education for a university and all that. So that was a good thing, but they couldn't really control the business side of it. He had a few mavericks with him. Uh, um, Whitlam himself was a very smart man, actually. But Bob Hawke came in, Bob Hawke had a fairly good education, and um, Keating was a reasonable treasurer, uh, but what they, these guys did that it was all right at the time. I agreed with it. They opened the door to uh, multinational corporations. Let's put it this way. They opened it. They sort of opened the door a little bit in a controlled sense to bring in investment in Australia because we really had a locked, a locked door policy, tariffs and all that. Now, that door was open. It should have been just open maybe 25%. And we, we should have kept strict control on the multinational corporations so that at the end of the day they didn't swamp us and they didn't extract profits overseas too much and we kept control on it. Unfortunately, we didn't. So at the end of the Paul Keating, uh, uh, Bob Hawke, Paul Keating era, uh, the country was in a, about a $21 billion deficit. Right, well, that on today's scale, that's not much, is it? However, uh, Johnny Howard and Costello came in and they thought, well, look, how are we going to change the $21 uh, billion deficit into a surplus? Let's think about this really carefully. So Johnny Howard and, and uh, uh, um, Costello scratched their head a little while. And how can we politically be good guys in all this as well? I know, they said in a meeting somewhere, I'd imagine, we will put together the first home buyer's bribe, I call it. So does Professor St uh, uh, Steve Keane. The first home buyer's bribe. So what we'll do, we'll give 10 grand or whatever it was back then to first home buyers and we'll slot them into 25 to 30 years of debt.